Welcome to another video. Let's solve this equation. The x root of x is equal to 4. We're supposed to find all values of x. Now, a long time ago, I know I did a limit problem, finding the limit of the x root of x as x approaches infinity, and the answer was 1. And I know that the limit as x approaches 0 of this same function is 0. So, what exactly would x be if the value of this function is 4? Let's get into the video. First and foremost, we need to know the domain of this function. What values of x can be in the function? We know that you can only plug in values that are greater than 0, and we know that it goes on to infinity. So we may start by, notice, domain of the x root of x is from 0 to infinity. So all the answers we're looking for must be slightly after 0 to just before infinity. Those are the possible answers we can get. No negative answers, right? So, but I know the nature of this function, okay? This function is neither increasing nor decreasing over the entire range. It changes. So, and I know that as you approach infinity from my previous experience, that this answer is going to approach 1. The value of this expression approaches 1. And as you go towards 0, it's going to approach 0. So it's, it's as if it's going straight up to 1, but it's not a straight line function. So it must be curved. Maybe it is curved, it's concave up or concave down. We can find out if there are any critical values where the values change if there's some local or absolute maximum or minimum. And here is what I'm going to do. I am going to find the critical numbers for this function and see if it has a maximum or minimum. Because what I'm thinking is, it is not possible for the value of this function to be equal to 4 as far as real numbers are concerned. So, let's do it. Rewrite this. I'll take the natural log of both sides so I can do my differentiation. Because remember, what I'm looking for is what will be the maximum value of this function. Because my, in my head, I'm thinking it is not possible for this to be equal to 4. 4 is too big. Okay, so we say y. So let's take the natural log of y means we're going to be taking the natural log of this, but that means 1 over x is coming down, and we have ln of x. So in order to find our critical numbers, we will have to differentiate, okay? So we're looking for y prime. Well, if we do implicit differentiation, if we differentiate the left-hand side, we're going to have the derivative of this is going to be y over, sorry, it's going to be y prime over y. If we differentiate this, we have to use the product rule. Differentiate the first, keep the second. If we differentiate this, we're going to have negative 1 over x squared. That's a derivative of 1 over x. And we keep the second, ln x. Plus, we're going to keep the first, and we're going to differentiate the second. If you differentiate ln x, you get 1 over x. So it looks like what we have is, oh, this is 1 over x squared. This is minus 1 over x squared. I can factor 1 over x squared out. So what I have here is equal to 1 over x squared. Now, this is positive, so I put this 1 minus. This would be natural log of x. Okay, and I still have y prime over, but I want y prime. So I'm going to move this y here by using it to multiply. If I bring y here, what was y? y is x to the 1 over x. So I can actually write this as x to the 1 over x here. x to the 1 over x. No, leave it. Let's just write x to the 1 
over x. Okay. And that's our y prime. And remember, if you're looking for your critical numbers, it means that y prime is equal to zero. The derivative will be equal to zero. So this will be equal to zero. So there are three factors here. This can never be equal to zero because the top is one, okay? This cannot be equal to zero because it's an exponential function. It is never equal to zero for real numbers. But this one can be equal to zero, okay? So, when y prime equals zero, one minus ln x equals zero. That is, ln of x equals one, and this simply means, if ln of x equals one, it means x must be e. Okay, the only time ln of x will be equal to one is if x equals e, because ln of e equals one. Now, this is our critical number. We can create a sign chart, okay? I don't want to waste space because I still have a lot of work to do. So if you create a sign chart, this is what's going to happen, okay? We have e here. If you pick a number that is less than e and you plug it into this derivative function, notice that 1 over anything squared is positive. So this is positive. This is still going to be positive, always positive, never negative for exponential functions. But 1 minus ln of anything less than e, ln of anything less than e is going to be smaller than 1. So 1 minus anything smaller is positive. So everything here is positive. So the slope of this function is going to be positive like this. Now if you switch it, and you pick any value greater than e, this will still be positive, positive, but now this number is now greater than 1. So 1 minus anything greater than 1 is negative, so you have this. So this clearly tells us that at, at e, the sign of the derivative changes, so our graph is more likely to be like this around e. So this is a maximum. Okay? It is a maximum. And I know from past experience that it is the absolute maximum because the two other extremes, which are the limit towards zero and the limit toward um, infinity, are not what we have here. They are both, this one is one and this one is a zero. So when you graph this function, actually, so remember when x equals e, it means our function at the maximum point at the maximum point, what you have is going to be y will be equal to e to the 1 over e. This is the biggest value you can ever get from this function when x is equal to e. And see what the graph looks like. It looks like this, something like this. Ah, uh, towards zero, it goes up and then it comes down, and then that's it. So that this point here is 1, this is 0, and this is the value of e, and the value here is, I think this value here is like um, e 1.445. Okay, so that's the ordered pair representing this peak. So the highest quantity you can get is going to be this. So now if the question is asking us to find the value of x when this function is equal to 4, 4 is high up here. This function never reaches 4. It means that the only values that can give us 4 will not be real, they would be imaginary because there is no real intersection of this line with this. So all the solutions to this equation are complex numbers and we're gonna to try to find them, all of them. So now that we're gonna attempt finding all the complex solutions, I will have to use my good friend, Lambert W function. And what that means is, I will have to manipulate this expression. So let's, 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 let's see what happens. You see, I have x to the one over x is equal to four. That's the equation written in this format. 
Here, my mission is to rewrite this side, or at least to find a way to write something that looks like this. So I can use the Lambert W function to evaluate the value of x. So what I'm going to do, which I think is the only way I can do that, is to raise both of these to the power x. And I'm going to raise this also to the power x and see what I have. This has become, will become x equals 4 to the x. Okay, now, no radic, no fractional exponent anymore and makes my life easy because now I can divide both sides by 4 to the x. So here I can write this. This is the same thing. Hey, this is the mission. Okay, this is the same thing as if I divide this, I'm going to have x over 4 to the x equals 1. I can divide by 4 to the x because 4 to the x can never be 0. It's an exponential function. Now this can be written as uh, x times 4 to the negative x. equals 1. The only problem I'm having right now is that I need this guy to be e, because if this was e, I can just put a minus on both sides and get my answer. But this is not e. So how do I write 4 in terms of e? Well, it's got to be e to the ln 4, right? It's got to be e to the ln 4. So what I have is x times e to the natural log of 4. That's what 4 is, okay? If I raise this to power e, watch this, change this, raise this to power negative x, it's going to be 1. But this, because this is an exponent for e, this also is an exponent. I can multiply these two together. So what I have is x e to the negative x ln 4 is equal to 1. So now, I just need, because of what I'm looking for, what is the, the exponent and the uh, factor multiplying e to the phi will have to be the same thing. So how can I make this the same as this? Well, I can multiply this by negative ln of 4. If I do that, I'm going to, and then I multiply this to by negative ln of 4. So what I have is going to be, so I have negative x ln 4 times e to the negative x ln 4 equals negative ln 4. Beautiful. I can take the Lambert W of both sides. So the Lambert W of negative x ln 4 e to the negative x ln 4 is equal to the W of negative ln 4. Well, based on our definition of the Lambert W function, what comes out of this is just negative x ln 4 will be equal to the w of, you see this negative ln 4 is the same thing as negative 1 times ln 4. We can move the negative 1 to the 4, so it becomes natural log of 4 to the negative 1, which is ln of 1 over 4. So I can write this just as ln of 1 over 4, okay? That's it. Remember what we're looking for is x. In order to get x, we can isolate x and say x equals the Lambert W of ln of 1 over 4 divided by negative ln. But negative ln 4 is the same as this. So I could just write ln. 1 over 4. This 
is the value of x. Now, how many answers are we going to get? It depends on, hey, come on, write well. It depends on what branch of the Lambert W function you're taking, and there are infinitely many of them. So, if we start from the principal branch, or we can just generally say that if we choose to follow the principal um, branch, which is the W, so we can say x naught will be equal to W naught of natural log of 1 over 4 divided by um, ln of 1 over 4. And this is just an example. If we try to evaluate this, I have to use the Lambert W function or Wolfram Alpha. So this is the approximate value of the complex number you're going to get from the principal branch. You might go to the first branch, the minus one branch, the positive one branch, whatever branch you choose, um, you're just going to get a bunch of answers that look like this. Okay, so there is no real solution to this equation and the complex solutions are just all of these answers that look like this, where k will be any of those integers representing the branches. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.